Right then, folks, I've brought the match fishing cameras along to the beautiful Furnace Mill Fishery today, where I'm going to be doing a very, very, very quick video on my all time favourite method in the old wide world. Well, for pole fishing, because my all time favourite method in the old wide world ever is like waggle or stick pole fishing, shallow fishing on the pole. I absolutely adore it. It's not like favourable blooming shallow conditions today, though. It's blooming freezing. The wind's blowing from like the east or northeast. And it's not making a blind bit of difference to the fishing, to be fair. Um, I took you through the, the one rig that I'm using. I won't bore you with, you know, how I got on there beforehand. Well, I will do. Basically, I started off on the bottom, got loads of liners, and then just come up with water on this rig, and that's been it, pretty much. Uh, dead's really, really straightforward. You've seen, seen, obviously, the depth markers on there. We're at, where are we now? There's 11 inches, so we're just between 10 and 11 inches. I've been catching them at sort of six or seven inches today. You can actually see them under the water. The, the lake itself is probably two and a half foot of the deepest. That's all it is on the bottom. So it's very, very shallow water, very very silty. Uh, when we hook a fish, you're like, there's like plumes are sort of like the, the mud coming up from the bottom and what have you. Uh, put a bit of ground bait in the margin as well, try and get some down there, but it's just too silty. I've definitely fed it wrong down there. It'd be, you know, like for all you paste people who love fishing paste, <coughs> spit right in the face of fishing paste. <coughs> but you definitely, definitely smash it to bits on paste on here. But as it is, we've got a little babby inline dibber, four tens dibber, four number 10 stots, two inch up length. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I do, I do waffle about this all the time and that when the fish are coming sort of 14 inches and less, it's so important that you're going shorter up lemons because honestly folks, F1s, even though we're catching lots of bob nud ruds today, uh, the F1s, when they're feeding that shallow, can be an absolute nightmare to hook. So, the, the, the stiffer you get, cheeky, the stiffer you can get your rig, the better you'll hit more bites. So, little baby two inch up length is the main one. We've just got a, an 18s, uh, I don't know what it is actually, it's one of these hooks in here straight out of the packet. Yeah, boy, 18s uh, GPMB. So, all I've done is made that uh, two inches. Main line is 0.18 AccuPower, dead simple. Very important when you are fishing this particular shallow rig that you're using an inline dibber. Basically what you'll see me do, like two or three quick slaps over, pull tip right over the top. The longest I'm going to leave the rig settled is sort of five or six seconds, that's all. I'm not going to be leaving it long. Um, and then this bit here, if you're allowed, obviously it, it, it's venue specific. You know, some venues will state you've got to have minimum six inches pull tip to float. Where you can, just get as short as possible as you can. Uh, and then again, anything you can do to stiffen your rig, it, you're just hitting them bites. Elastic wise, because it's so shallow and the fish sort of like when you hook them, they're running straight out of the peg. I'm just using a nice soft um, nine inch jury slip today. Lovely stuff. Very important that you're stiffening everything up as well. You know, pole wise, I've got a short three on, little babby uh, F1 top kits. Um, just, just a case of when you are fishing shallow, you've got to be hitting them lightning fast bites. So I, I've waffled enough about the rig. Let's go and see it put into practice. now. I'm fishing maggots today and there is a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of rud around. Um, I've probably been, not been fishing for 10 or 15 minutes. I'm fully expecting to catch a few rud. Then what's been happening, the pattern as it, as it been, get a few rud and the F1s will come in for a look. So hopefully we'll catch a, an F1 or two for you. As I said, I don't want it to be a long video. I am running out of maggots fast though. I did, I did start off with four pints like half an hour ago and I've got like half a pint left. No, I did bring a, I did bring a lot of bait today. So we're not fishing too far out. And it's important, little tip for you. Obviously we've got that little tiny bulk of shots, a little tip for you. You won't be able to pick it up on the, on camera, but I am side hooking the maggot. It's so important that you side hook the maggot because that's how all maggots fall through the water. It just looks so much more natural. Right, enough of me waffling. Let's go and catch some fishes. So just before we go out, we're going to feed some bait. I'm fully expecting to catch a rod. I really am. I hope it's an F1. So feed some bait all the way out then what you'll see me do two or three quick slaps over and then i'm going to put that pole tip right over the flow five or six seconds as long as i'd leave it and oh <laughs> did you see that i was literally just about to slap it over again and f1's had it but you saw how tight that line was must must have tight line pole tip to flow if you don't there's any slackness in it you're just going to be uh, missing bite after bite after bite i mean obviously in some venues you know I know I bang on about it all the time. You, you don't you don't need floats. Some of the, the venues I go to literally just got a little bit of line uh, with just some shots on and you just 
just sat there like tapping. And it is, it's, it's a phenomenal way of putting a big weight of fishing in there in a short space of time. Um, but obviously, most venues you'll have to use floats. Lovely F1, probably a pound and a half. Going to join the others. Now at this stage here, obviously, uh, we're using stocks, they are prone to move up your line, so just make sure they're always in that same position. Any slam on your hook length, get that off, change your bait if it's still on, and then straight back in business. I would have definitely, you know, obviously zoned the F1s in more today with, with pellets, but just, just a bit lazy folks, didn't bring any pellets. I had a load of maggots left from the weekend, so I thought I'd just come and use them up. Um, it's just been an awesome day. We've been fishing probably maybe two and a half to three hours. I've probably got, I reckon I've double figures of rud, rud alone. Started off catching them uh, and then the F1s, the F1s proper, proper come and had a look in. I've had a, I've had a tench, I've had like a crewy, carpy, hybridy thing. Uh, I've had a golden rud, I've had a, I've had a goujon up in the water as well. It's just been awesome. What a venue it is. We are on, I think we're on the mill pool furnaces behind us we're on the mill pool so yeah went off on a bit of a tangent then folks but you can see how often i'm lifting that rig out whacking it over two or three slaps but most important making sure that pole top sorry that pole tip is right over our float that was a little babby one then now, i'm not going to do it just yet but i want to show you the difference if you are allowed to tap your pole in tapping as regards to um getting away from sort of like the, the small silver fish. We'll probably catch a blooming silver when I start doing it, but if you're allowed to tap at a venue, F1s love it. They just love that noise, that commotion. So you saw that time we constant slapping, we had that little babby bob nud rod, um, and then we had that one, that little babby one that fell off, then we had that one. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna tap the poles. If it's allowed at your venue, oh, it's ridiculous. So, a little bit different in that I'm not going to feed as much. I'm basically, I'm going to slap it over, but just start walloping the water. That'll get sort of like eight or 10 seconds and I'll whop it over again. It's all about that noise, that commotion. The F1s absolutely love it. You won't get as many, well, shouldn't get as many uh, bites off small, smaller fish. You won't catch carp doing this. It's basically a method for F1s. There you go. So you've seen the difference with like walloping that water. F1s are just like the curious fish that come into that noise. You don't even need to feed as much. But again, set rules, it's banned on a lot of water. I just wanted to show you the difference with it. If it's allowed, you've got to do it. It's just, it's just amazing. I absolutely adore this style of fish. Hey, it's a ghosty F1. Who won the ghosty F1s? I absolutely adore this style of fish. You won the ghostly F1s. Where's it gone? It's not in my net. I can't see it. <laughs> first one we've had and all I keep, kept seeing it coming into the bait this one today and he's finally took it look at him beautiful two pounds five ounces he is perfectly hooked um but yeah no it's just it's one of them methods that max conditions you, you've, you've got to have it in your armory if you don't yeah I'm going to say as much, you aren't going to compete. All the big matches, the big qualifiers that I've been going in lately, they're all getting one shallow. You've, you've got to have shallow fishing in your armoury. You do need a few top kits set up. You need one, obviously, spread shots uh, through the rig. So you're whacking that over, seeing what's happening through the water, you know, with the carbon stem, uh, so you can see where the fish are. When there's a lot of fish there and they're really competing, that's when this little beauty comes into play with a little tiny babby bulk of shot there, so the fish are hooking themselves. Obviously, if you weren't allowed to, you know, tap, um, jigger comes into play. If you didn't have to have a float on, then obviously you don't even need this, just a bit, little bit of line on. So obviously check your fishery rules where you go into. But honestly, folks, if, if you try it, you'll just want to do it more and more. I can't, I can never wait from one year to the next or like this time of year when, you know, things start to happen, fish start feeding because the next thing on the agenda spawning. So we're going to be having a big feed up ready for that now. Uh, but it's just when you know when the water starts to warm up and the, the beauty of a shallow venue as well It's gonna obviously warm up a lot quicker uh, So I think I've bored you enough now So I'm gonna go and catch me a lot more fishes and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah